Happy Friday, you guys. Welcome to a new episode of the Blue Mouse podcast. My name is Emily. I'm the full-time knitwear designer behind the Blue Mouse. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry under that same name. And yeah, it's been a couple weeks, so I have quite a few things to share with you, which is nice. I've decided that I'm going to try and do every week as a weekly upload, but if I'm not feeling well like I was last week, I'm just not going to put deep pressure on myself, so if you don't see me for a week, I'll be back probably the following week. So that being said, let's just jump into it. This is a knitting and primarily focused on knitwear design podcast if you're new here, which I noticed there's quite a few new people here, so welcome. I'm really excited to have you here. There's over 5,000 of you, which is insane. I'm so grateful to have you here and I hope that you'll enjoy this episode. So the first thing I really want to share, I think, is my finished Appenzell cardigan. I don't think I showed this last time. Pretty sure I just finished this last week. But here it is. It's a little hard to show because it's so oversized. But yeah, I pinned it in the front so you could kind of get a look at what it will be like. But it has a garter panel running up the front and it has pretty wide sleeves so I don't have the cuffs come in too tight around your wrists. They're pretty wide and I like that the sleeves have very little shaping to them. It's just kind of a cozy oversized cardigan. Way too hot to wear it now but I can't wait until the weather cools down and we can just pull our huge pile of knits out. So this is going in that pile. And the pattern is already off to my testers, so it will be out at the end of September for you guys. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. I love the color. I don't think I've had a mustard colored sweater, so that's gotta be one of my favorites. And let's see what else. I think that's the only thing that I have really finished fully other than a pair of socks. But real quick, I do want to show you the sweater that I'm wearing right now. This is my Tune sweater. It's spelled T-H-U-N, but pronounced like Tune. So here it is. It's got really pretty stripes. And it also has a split hem, which you can't really see. But the back is like an inch and a half longer than the front. It's an optional thing. You don't have to. You could just make it a normal sweater. But I really like the split hem detail. And it's a raglan shape. The stripes are the same for the body and the sleeves. They're in the same place and they have the same number of stripes. So you have a longer portion of the main color that just goes down for the sleeve to match the body. But you could easily add more stripes to the body and to the sleeves if you're interested in that. And yeah, so this actually comes out today. I'll have a coupon code below if you're interested. But yeah, I'm really, really excited about this one. I know a lot of you have been really anxiously awaiting this release. So it's out today. I have to go back after this podcast and do a couple of little tweaks and make sure it's all ready to go. And then it'll be out. So thank you guys so much for the support you've already shown for it. And if you want to buy the pattern, there's the coupon below. It'll be available today. And yeah, I'm just really, really excited about it. And it just, all your support is so helpful. I wouldn't be able to design without you guys. So thank you. Thank you for anyone who's buying a pattern or even if you just like it on Ravelry or share it on Instagram, it really helps me out. So just thank you so much for all the support. I've kind of found a new obsession in sewing. I've always wanted to be good at it and just never really put the time in, probably because the sewing machine when I lived with my parents like growing up and everything it was always tucked away in a back closet kind of hard to get out and so I never wanted to get it out because then I'd have to put everything all back and into that closet and so it just took way too much time and effort but now that I've moved out of my parents house they have turned my old bedroom into a sewing room so that my mom and I can sew she actually has two machines I think one that she's had for a really long time and I I feel like the second one she bought when I was learning to sew when I was a kid, but I could be wrong about that. But yeah, so we have this table set up where we can both sew, and I've found a real obsession with it. 
So I may occasionally share some things that I sew on here. This will still predominantly be a knitting and design podcast, but I really am enjoying it. It's nice to have another creative outlet. Um, I work too much. Honestly, Johnny's always giving me crap because I just, I work way too much. And the past few weeks I've taken off Saturdays and just gone and spent the entire day hanging out with my mom and sewing, which I never used to do. I used to work all Saturday. That was like one of my biggest work days. And I just, I used to like feel bad if I would take a day off of work. But I mean, if you work a nine to five, you don't work on the weekends typically. So I feel like it should be okay to take that day off. So I'm really enjoying it. And last week I worked on a ton of bags. So I'm kind of learning different styles of sewing bags. So I have a bunch of my yarn scraps in here for one of my whips that I'm gonna show you. But this is one of my practice bags. It's not perfect by any means. It has quite a lot of flaws, but I learned a lot with it. So it's actually a drawstring. I don't have a drawstring in it at the moment, but it can fit it in this. So I was really proud of myself for being able to put a different color drawstring holder section to it. So it's lined and has a box bottom too, which was something I had, I don't think I'd ever really done before. It's not perfect, but it was really fun to learn and I practiced and did a couple zippered pouches and a couple drawstring bags. So I'll show you those other ones maybe some other time. They're made with kind of scrap fabric that I'm not crazy about, but I was just kind of playing around and learning how to do it. But one I'm really proud of is one that I made on Tuesday. My mom and I have date nights every Tuesday and so she was working on her teaching and I was working on this bag. And so I got these, I believe it's Moda Fabrics little charm packs. So they come in these tiny two and a half inch square pre-cuts and I wanted to make a little scrappy bag and that's what I did. So here's one side of it. So the little charm packs are all coordinated fabric. So these are basically all the same fabrics. Like a few of them are repeated or they're all repeated, but there's maybe like five or six unique ones. And then this is like the darker half and this is the lighter half, but they're basically the same fabrics with different background colors. And this is not what I was intending to do. The box bottom is quite, quite boxed. Um, I think I've figured out how the math works with all that now, but I really like it. It doesn't line up, but I love it. It's very, very fun. It took forever. But that's kind of partially why I love it so much, is all the work that went into it. And, and yeah, it's holding one of my whips that I'm going to show you. So a couple weeks ago I was working on a scrappy sweater, and I remember telling you guys I didn't like it. So here's the, the first half of that first sample that I made. I didn't like the colors, and it came out way too big after I blocked it because my gauge was not right. So here's the first one that I made, and this is with all the colors that I wasn't crazy about. So the colors don't really go together in this as well as I was hoping, and I think I just used too many dark colors for what I had originally envisioned. So I could certainly make another one with darker colors, but this is the one I've made with lighter colors, and I love it. So it turned out a lot better. Let me just get it untangled. This is the first half. I'm working on the back panel now, but this is the front panel. So here it is. So it has drop stitch details, which you can see there. So I used different varieties of like the length of drop stitches. So you can basically yarn over as many times as you want for a drop stitch to make it as long as you want. So I started out and I did three different lengths. So I have one length here, which is just the single drop stitch. This right here is a single. Another single here, and then this is a double. And then this is the triple. So yeah, it 
is a lot of fun. It's very fast. It's a lot shorter than that first sample because my row gauge was really off, so I actually didn't need as many rows as I knit for the first sample. So it just went a lot faster, and there's a little bit of like shaping around the arms to try and hopefully prevent some bulk underneath the arms. There's a little bit of shoulder shaping, and so it's all worked in pieces because I want it to be completely garter. Garter in the round isn't as nice because you have to purl. I don't want any purling, I just want to work garter. So the plan is to make a back. We're going to join it at the shoulders with a three needle bind off, and then you're going to not seam the rest of it. Instead, you're going to pick up and do the sleeve, work it flat, you're going to pick up stitches but like not join in the round so you'll just be working back and forth and then do that for both and then you can block it and lay it completely flat and then you can seam down the sleeve and then down the side and you should be good. So that's my plan. I'm hoping to be done with the back maybe by tonight and then I can start the sleeves a little later. I'm thinking about doing three quarter length sleeves and instead of doing any kind of ribbing because I, I want it to be all garter, I think I'm going to change needle sizes towards the cuff of it or what the cuff would be and that should bring it in a little bit instead of doing some ribbing to tighten it up. So yeah, we'll see. I like these colors a lot better. This is a little bright but the rest of them seem to go pretty well. So yeah, I went a much more muted tone with it and I just used, I used a lot more minis this time. So I guess it's not quite a scrap sweater because I didn't have enough coordinating scraps. But it would be great for a mix of scraps and minis like I'm doing. Like pretty much all the pastel ones are minis that I got from Autumn and Indigo. And then you have some like Woolberry Fiber Co. And I know I have some Explorer Knits and Fibers in here, and some Cocone yarn. And I think that's it for this part. I'm going to bring in some different colors for the sleeves. But yeah, I really enjoy it, and it's very fast and fun, and changing colors and doing drop stitches is really keeping it interesting. So yes, I've already started on my back panel and I'm trying to do exactly the same but it's ending up being slightly different because I ran out of yarn for a couple so one of these I had to change colors mid row and I was on a wrong side row so you kind of get a few of those pearl bumps in the wrong color showing on the right side which you can see here that the, the pink is showing through a little bit into the brown but I don't, I don't really care. This is the back. And honestly, if you're not a knitter, you're not going to notice, right? So, and it's supposed to be kind of a scrappy project. So I can just mix it up when I want to mix it up. So yeah, that is my first whip. I've been cranking on that for a few days. And mostly what I've been doing in the past two weeks is computer work. So that's my first real introduction again, or reintroduction into sweater knitting after a couple weeks of mostly computer work. So yeah, I've got a bag full of scraps in here and I'm just gonna try and go through a lot of them. I'm trying to decide what color I want the neckline to be, so I shape for the neckline but I'm going to pick it up and work a rolled knit hem at the end and I'm kind of leaning towards this color very very pretty. I want something not super pastel-y, not super light like this. I would like a little bit more color like since it's going to be so close to my face but yeah we'll see. I should get to that early next week hopefully. All right and then a couple other finished objects. So you may remember this sock from like a month ago maybe? Maybe a little long, maybe a little longer. <laughs> But this is my unpublished new sock pattern. It's coming out probably in a couple weeks. It is using the Little Wolf Knits yarn in beach grass. That's the color. And I wanted to kind of go with the theme of the name. 
So I came up with calling it sea oats because it's a certain kind of, I think like a grass-like plant that grows on the beach. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what I researched and found. So I actually made a second one. I wasn't fully convinced that I was going to because you don't really need to if you're really seeing a pattern. You mainly just need the one for the photos. But I did make a second one. I knit this in just a few days actually. It was pretty fast and, and fun. So I need to block it still. It looks a little wonky. But I really like it and I just got this back from my editor so I will be sending it off to testers probably tomorrow unless I hit a snag. But that's the plan. And then it should be out to you guys in maybe two weeks. So that's exciting. Always on that sock knitting grind. So I did finish one of my, I think I showed you this, craggy shore socks in a homespun house like May Lord of the Rings colorway. And I started a second one and I think I'm about to the toe. Not positive, I still have some counting to do and I just haven't had the time but I'm very, very close to the toe. And I love these, I can't wait to block them and see what they look like. They're so, so fun and so meditative to work on. And then finally, one of these is an acquisition. So I'm going to make another mini version of my tune sweater. So the little tune will be out in a couple weeks and I made one sample, but it's a little bit different than the final product showed up. In the final pattern, I guess. The first three sizes only actually have three contrasting color stripes instead of four. And I made the third size with four stripes before I changed that up for the pattern. So I feel a little bit funky putting that as one of the photos without a disclaimer, so I'm going to make a second one. And this will be a gift for my new niece. And then I'll probably put photos of the original little tune photo or little tune sweater on the pattern page but I'll make a note that it's a little different but this one will be two pattern exactly so let me figure out what colors these are real fast so they're both autumn and indigo fibers and they're classic DK which is a hundred percent superwash merino with 231 yards per 100 grams so this color I got like a year ago maybe longer and it's called morning dew it kind of looks like honeydew. It's very, not quite minty, but yeah, it looks like honeydew to me. And then I got this just this week called Rosewood, and it's the same base. So I'm going to put those together. I think I'll probably do this as the main color with this striped in. I don't know. What do you think? I definitely think I like this better with a little bit of this striped in. Autumn and Ingo is one of my favorite dyers. Her semi-solids are incredible and I'm, I'm really into working more with solids and semi-solids lately because speckles are beautiful. They're amazing. I collect them, they're beautiful, but they're hard to work with and they're hard to design with because it really muddles the stitch pattern. It can be done. I know I saw someone who made this tune sweater and her contrasting color was a speckled. And it was really, really pretty. But it wouldn't have worked as well for the sample, I don't think, because you don't get those clean lines as much. So I'm just really into more solid colors because it just works really well with the kind of designs that I'm putting out. So her lines are amazing. Her colors are fantastic. I will be buying her yarn forever. So she just sent a little bit of a sample, just like a, a few, maybe like a yard of a new base that she has, which is more of like a local non-superwash wool, and I'm, I'm dying to try it. So I think I'm gonna save up and that will be my next sweater quantity that I buy, hopefully. I'm not going to buy any sweaters quantity until I get through a few designs. I'm trying to have maybe four or five sweaters done before I go on vacation in a month. So we'll see how that goes. I have to finish up a few more bits of math and then it should be pretty solid. Um, I just have to do 
that scrappy sweater, which I'm hoping to have finished and written by the middle of next week. And then I have to do that men's raglan sweater, which I showed a swatch for. And then I just got some yarn, actually, last week. I bought some Lion Brand 24-7 cotton in the Ecru color. And confession about this, I actually got this yarn from Lion Brand. Like, they sent it to me last summer. And I got started on a sweater, and then life got insane, and that, that sweater got buried, and I never finished it, and I don't know what happened to the yarn. When I moved, I don't know where it went. It went somewhere, but I lost it. So I felt really bad, so I bought some more, and I'm going to remake that sweater, because I do like that design, but I felt bad that I lost the yarn, so I bought the same stuff, and I'm going to remake it. It's going to be... It was originally going to be worked bottom up, where you work in the round, then you split for the sleeves and you work flat. And I actually think I'm going to do a raglan instead because it's easier. Well, it's not necessarily easier to design, but it's easier to knit. Um, for me, at least. So, yeah, I'm going to try and have this done. This is my third one I'm, that I'm going to start. And then I'm going to start two more at some point. There's no rush on these two. So I'm going to start a top-down yoke sweater with some lace. It's going to be either long sleeve or three-quarter length sleeves with this Ottoman Indigo, which is her cotton wool, which I've showed this before. So I'll, I'll give you more details when I actually get started on the pattern. And then I showed this the last couple times, which is Allie's yarn, the Explore Knits and Fibers, in the fur colorway. So I'm going to do that lacy raglan with this soon. So lots, lots of things are coming soon. And let me grab one more thing. This is a pattern that I started last summer. There's a pattern here. I just kind of was playing around with the sock design and came up with something super simple. I'm sure I'll change it up a bit, but it has a very simple cable. If you can see that. And I made a pair of these for my friend Janine and gave them to her at OMO last summer. And I meant to write up the pattern, and I know quite a few people were asking about it, and I just lost track of time and didn't have the time and kind of lost interest in it. And then I found this when I was cleaning out my studio, and I was, yeah, I'm going to start these. So this is on my queue as well. And yeah, so I have some yarn already winded up, wound up for this, or caked up, whatever you want to call it, for this. So this will also be starting sometime soon. There's lots of things coming down the line and I'm really excited about it. I feel like I finally got the ball rolling again after being sick for so long and kind of putting a halt on work. It's starting to get going again where there should be a release every few weeks or so from now on. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. I had a company reach out to me the other day asking if I would design a sock pattern so for beginners. So that one will be out in October, but I gotta find, you know, something that will work well for beginners. So yeah, lots of things, lots of things coming down the line and I'm really excited to share them with you guys. I'm very grateful that you guys watch these podcasts and are interested and the things that are coming up and yeah so I hope you guys have a great weekend get lots of knitting time or lots of time spent outside in the sun and yeah thank you so much for the support on here all 5,000 of you that's insane and so incredible thank you and thank you to everyone who has bought patterns for me in the past or will be buying this tune sweater it really helps me be able to do this long term and to keep making new designs so it means the world it really really does thank you so much have a great weekend